Welcome to Sports Cards once again. In this video, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to look at a former NBA player who played a total of 137 games for three different teams, averaged just 4.4 points per game, and yet has many basketball cards that are worth more than many All-Stars in the league. This is the story of Wang Zhizhi. Taking a look at some of Wang Zhizhi's card prices, you'd think he was a well-established former NBA star. However, his 4.4 points per game average during the 137 games he played in the NBA with the Mavericks, Clippers, and Heat would suggest a very different story. So why are quite a number of his cards so expensive? Well, it has everything to do with his historical significance and his basketball play outside of the NBA. Now, while Yao Ming may have the fame of being the best basketball player from China to play in the NBA, the first one to do so was none other than Wang Zhizhi. He was selected by the Dallas Mavericks with the 36th overall pick in 1999, surprising almost everyone. When he was drafted, he was actually already on contract with a team in the Chinese Basketball Association, the Baiyi Rockets, where he was the guy. They didn't want to lose him. The Rockets were in the midst of an historic dynasty in the CBA, so they didn't let him out of his contract. Starting with the first season of the CBA in 1995-96, Wong helped lead his team to win the CBA championship for literally every single year since the league began. From 1995 until 2001, the championship trophy was always in the hands of the Rockets, and Wong Zhizhi was the biggest reason why. In 2001, after long contract negotiations with his team in China, they finally came to an agreement that enabled Wong to head to the NBA as the first ever Chinese basketball player to do so. Meanwhile, back in the CBA, this left the field wide open, and along came Yao Ming, who together with his Shanghai Sharks, ended the Rockets' long dynasty immediately after Wang left. Arriving in Dallas to play with the Mavericks must have been a bit of a shock to the system, as Wang went from one of the best in the whole league back in China to a bench warmer at the end of the Mavericks rotation. In fact, in his rookie season, he only played in five games total. Immediately after his rookie year, Wang had to rush back to China for two requirements that had been agreed upon previously in his contract negotiations to leave the CBA. The first previously agreed upon arrangement was for him to play for China during the 2001 East Asian Games, which he did. After that, while the NBA season was getting underway, Wang then had to go and play in China's CBA 2001 National Games in November of 2001, where Wang helped lead his team to a one-point finals victory over Yao Ming's Shanghai Sharks. Returning to the Mavericks late, and with just having had an exhausting string of high-level competition, it was definitely not an ideal situation for the young Wang but he did manage to become a more consistent contributor to the Mavericks during his second season with them. He played a total of 55 games, averaging about 11 minutes, and averaging about 5.6 points and two rebounds, so something. Now the end of his second season in Dallas was also the end of his contract. His future was a bit up in the air. Would he stay in the NBA? Would he return to China? He decided to stay for the summer to contemplate his next steps. However, as part of the original contract he had signed with the Mavericks, it stipulated that in the summer after the 2001-2 season, Wang should return to China to practice with the Chinese national team. Instead, Wang decided to stay in the US and he moved to Los Angeles without informing either the Mavericks front office or the officials for the Chinese national team. The Chinese national team tried to get Wang to come back to China to train with the team, but Wang ignored their communication attempts. At this point, there even started to be news stories reporting that Wang was considering defecting to the US and not wanting to return to China. And Wang later claimed it was all just a big misunderstanding. But eventually during the offseason, Wang did end up signing with the Los Angeles Clippers. But at the same time, he was dismissed from the Chinese national team for failing to return to train with the team that summer. Wang played just one year with the Clippers, playing in 41 games, and he averaged about 10 minutes per game, 4.4 points, and two rebounds. And after one year with the Clippers, he was waived, and the Miami Heat swooped in to offer him a two-year contract. However, during his two years in Miami, he only played a total of 34 games, averaging close to five minutes of garbage time per game and just 2.5 points. After this string of rather unsuccessful years in the NBA, Wong didn't see much interest from other teams trying to sign him, so he decided to return to China, and one year later joined his former team, the Bayi Rockets again. Immediately, Wong's return was impactful, as he led his Rockets to a CBA championship and was named the CBA Finals MVP. Wong Zhizhi continued to play in the CBA until, until 2014, when he retired from playing basketball. And soon thereafter, he became the assistant coach of his Rockets, and then in 2018, he took over the head coach position, and he remains there today. During his career in the CBA, Wong averaged 22.3 points and 8.4 rebounds per game. 
his best four years being the two years before he went to the NBA and the two years after he returned from the NBA when he averaged over 26 points per game and up to 11.7 rebounds per game. Wang Zhezhe may not have had a very successful NBA career, but he is very well known by basketball fans in China, and as China has become a hot spot for basketball card collecting, it only makes sense that his cards would be so valuable with the Chinese domestic market. As such, today you can find his cards going for quite a lot on eBay, ComC, or other sports card sites, as long as it's a site that is frequented by some people in China. And that is the story of Wang Zhezhe. If you liked this video, please do subscribe to the channel for lots of great basketball card and basketball related content. If you have ideas for other videos like this that I could make, please do let me know. This one I wasn't really expecting to, to make actually, but as I was looking through different cards, I kept coming across Wang Zhezhe and when I was you know, so surprised that his cards were so expensive. So I decided to do a, a little bit more research on, on his story. I decided to make a video about it. So if you have any other players that you think would be kind of interesting to, to share some information about, please do let me know and see you next time.